Hello, in this video we're going to look at the two-part tariff, but this time when consumers have different demand curves. So here's the setup. A firm sells to two consumers who have different demands. The firm has a total cost structure given by total cost equals 10 times Q. Notice we're ignoring fixed cost. This will just keep the math a little bit simpler. Marginal cost is the derivative of total cost, and marginal cost is constant at $10 and average cost also happens to be ten dollars. Total cost divided by Q is also ten. Um, in the two-part tariff, or so for a little review, a two-part tariff uh, is a two-part pricing strategy. There is an access fee or membership fee or annual or monthly dues that needs to be paid before members can buy any units of the product that the firm is selling. So we got an access fee and then the price per unit purchased. Here are two consumers, and they do have different demand curves here. Consumer 1's demand uh, is given over here. The inverse demand is 40 minus Q. If we were to graph it, it would look like this. And consumer 2's demand is given over here. Uh, generally, in two-part tariffs, uh, the general format is price equals marginal cost. So with marginal cost at 10, the price is $10. Consumer 1 would buy 30 units and then the firm would charge an access fee equal to consumer surplus, which is this triangle right here, given by one-half base times height, and here's the dimensions of this triangle between the price and the demand curve. Um, just note that in general, and we'll be coming back to this, that consumer surplus can be thought of as one-half 40 minus P, okay, whatever the price is, times Q, uh, the number of units that the consumer buys. And you can do a similar thing here for consumer two. All right, uh, moving on. So the two-part tariff. Uh, the first case here, suppose the firm can charge consumers different access fees. The firm will set price equal to marginal cost, selling 30 units to consumer one and 40 units to consumer two. Consumer surplus at these values will equal the access fee. And that's all we did over here. So uh, our first setup here is that assuming that consumers can be charged different access fees, the profit maximizing strategy is to set price equal to marginal cost for both consumers. And then the consumer surplus will represent the access fee for each consumer. So consumer one's access fee, consumer two's access fee. And let's go ahead and plug that into the profit equation. The profit for the firm is the access fee from consumer one plus consumer two plus price minus marginal cost times the number of units sold to consumer one plus price minus marginal cost times the number of units sold to consumer two. Uh, since average cost equals marginal cost, this thing in parentheses here is just the profit per unit. So profit per unit times the number of units um, gets the profit uh, from the units sold to consumer one, and then likewise the profit per unit for consumer two times the number of units that consumer two buys um, can be represented by this. So the profit here is going to be 1,250. Everything else is zero since price equals marginal cost, which equals average cost, not making any economic profit on the units sold. So total profit is 1,250. And maybe an example where a, a firm charges different access fees might be a golf club where junior members or younger members get a discounted access fee or monthly dues. Okay, moving on. Step two, suppose firms must charge consumers the same access fee. So option one is to set price equal to marginal cost and charge each consumer the lowest access, access fee. In this case, that would be consumer one. So consumer one's um, consumer surplus is 450. So we'll charge all consumers $450 access fee, not making any profit on the unit sold. The firm's profit would be $900. Consumer one and consumer two both pay an access fee of 450. Another option would be, once again, set price equal to marginal cost and charge each consumer the highest access fee. And as we learned, consumer two's access fee here 
uh, is $800, uh, the amount of consumer surplus. And if we did that, we would only sell to one customer. Consumer one will not become a member uh, given that the access fee exceeds consumer one's consumer surplus. So the profit under this strategy would just be $800. You only sell one membership, uh, membership to consumer two. And finally, option three. Let's calculate the profit maximizing price and access fee of selling to both members with each charge the same price and access fee. The access fee cannot exceed consumer one's consumer surplus. Consumer one's consumer surplus, as we th saw at the beginning here, can be written in this general format. One half times 40 minus P, okay, and that's coming from the consumer's demand, times the number of units that cons the consumer one buys. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put in for Q here 40 minus P. So after making a substitution, consumer one's consumer surplus is now given by this. And then one final simpli uh, simplification is that consumer surplus for consumer one is one half 40 minus P, and that's squared. The all important profit equation then is going to be this for the firm. It's going to be two times the consumer surplus uh, from consumer one, two because we got two consumers. And then the profit per unit times the number of units sold in aggregate to consumer one and consumer two. So all I'm going to do now is start making some substitutions, plugging 40 minus P squared or one half 40 minus P squared in to, uh, the parentheses down here. Marshall cost, we're told, is 10. Uh, and then I'm going to substitute in Q1 and Q subscript 2. So making those substitutions now, and simplifying, so two times one half, that just becomes one. So you get that nice simplification here. 40 plus 50 is 90, and the minus P plus the minus P is minus 2P. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to price. So doing that, uh, let me walk you through the derivative. So we got a 2 here. That's going to come down in front. Then it's going to be 2 minus 1, so that, that disappears. And then this is all going to be multiplied by the derivative of what's in parentheses. So the derivative of what's in parentheses with respect to P is just minus 1. So I got the minus 1 here. So that takes the derivative, uh, takes care of the derivative for this first term. Uh, the second part of this, uh, the derivative of this with respect to P, we're going to just follow the, the product rule. So the first thing I do is take the derivative of what's in parentheses here on the left-hand side. So the derivative of this is just 1. Derivative of P is just 1. And then that's multiplied back through by 90 minus 2P. And then we sort of do the opposite. I'm going to write P minus 10. And then I'm going to take the derivative of this last remaining thing that's in parentheses. And the derivative of 90 minus 2P with respect to price is just minus 2. So that's where that minus 2 is coming from. Uh, and now just multiplying things and simplifying things, we can move down to this step here. Again, this is set equal to zero. This is a maximization problem. Um, this then will simplify to 30 minus 2p, dividing th through by 30. The profit maximizing price is $15. Each consumer will be charged $15 per unit. Plugging $15 into the demand for both consumers. Consumer 1 will buy 25 units, 40 minus P. And consumer 2 will buy 35 units, 15 minu or 50 minus 15. So calculating consumer surplus at these values. So once again, getting consumer 1's consumer surplus formula and now evaluating it at the answers we found in the previous step, a price of 15, and the fact that consumer 1 is buying 25 units. Consumer surplus for consumer 1 would be $312.50 at that value. Since there are two consumers, each consumer's access fee will be $312.50. So plugging this all into the profit function now. The firm's profit will be two times the consumer surplus of consumer one plus, uh, 
price minus marginal cost. Price is $15, marginal cost is 10. The total quantity sold here is 60. So we get a profit of 925. Um, so that is how you solve a two-part tariff problem when you have consumers with different demands. I hope you found this video.